Good morning, Titans. Today is Friday, February 28th, and you're watching Titan TV. I'm Debra. And I'm Allie. So, Allie, did you eat your pie this month? Why would I eat pie? Because February is pie month. Hey, Titans, this is Kirsten with Titan TV. Pie is a favorite dessert globally, so why not celebrate with February being National Pie Month? A nationwide poll by Sean's Consumer Brands North America shows that apple pie, pumpkin pie, and chocolate cream pie are America's favorite. And a poll by TLC says that apple pie is the sixth most common dessert in the nation. We went around asking students about this month-long holiday. Were you aware that February is National Pie Month? No. No. I was not. Not at all. Really? No, I honestly wasn't. No, I wasn't actually. Do you like pie? Sometimes. Absolutely. I love pie. Who doesn't like pie? Yes. Yes, I do. What is your favorite kind of pie? Ice cream pie. Coconut cream pie. If I had to choose one, I'd probably go with pumpkin pie. That's pretty hard. I would, mm, not cherry. Cherry's kind of gross. I think apple's pretty good. Pumpkin pie. The favorite flavor has got to be apple pie. Like bar none, especially for springtime. I love apple pie, but you know. Mmm, I want pie. Allie, we're what? still live here. If someone came and attacked Centennial, what would we do? I'm not sure. But Mutavira and Julia are gonna give us more information about what we would do in those dangerous situations. School shootings are no longer a rare event in America, and unfortunately they have become a common crisis in our society. We never know when and where the next school shooting will happen. Are we prepared? We asked Mr. Sears, the AP in charge of building safety, about his opinions on school shootings and the student staff procedures we should take if and when the time comes. It's a serious issue that we're, the United States is facing. Schools have to be prepared. More importantly, we have to get those individuals help and try to find out the root of the issue with those specific individuals going into schools and feeling like they can harm individuals. If a school shooting did happen, we would go into lockdown for the campus and the teachers have uh, a list of instructions what they will tell the students inside. We won't, as an administrative staff, tell the individuals what to do. That individual teacher in the classroom or that area will tell those kids what to do. If a student sees anything suspicious, they definitely need to report to the teacher, administrator, or in our SRO, Officer Jones, that immediately. Even a backpack just laying on the ground, you never know. Just be cautious and let us know. Students, hopefully we will never know a situation such as Columbine or Sandy Hook, but if we are aware of suspicious activity, we should report it and maybe something could be prevented. Do you know what band and color guard are up to lately? Yeah, they've been to a lot of competitions. Really? I thought that they stopped when football season was over. Nope, let's go to Katie with more. When they're on the field, you know them as the Mighty Titan Marching Band. But what happens when football season is over? All marching band students are required to also participate in concert bands during the second semester. During concert season, the bands are preparing music to compete in the UIL competition April 15th and 16th. We asked band director Mr. Ryan whether he considers second semester an off-season for the band. Well, the second semester for band kids is marching band season's over. And marching band season is the most visible part of the program. But in the spring, we continue on with... UIL concert band, jazz band, solo and ensemble, auditions for next year. So the students are quite busy in the spring semester. Band students at Centennial also participate in optional jazz bands that practice before and after school. We asked All-State trombone player Trenton Barnes how being in jazz band differs from the concert bands. The difference to me is that we get to have a lot more fun with expression and we get to kind of make it up as we go along, unlike concert band where it's like everything's on the paper. Wish us luck at our competition today. During marching season, they add flair and color to the marching show, but after that, the Color Guard starts on their own show for multiple Winter Guard competitions. Earlier this month, the JV Winter Guard placed first in their competition with their performance too, Don't You Worry Child by Swedish House Mafia. Congratulations and good luck at your competition today. This is Katie with Titan TV. Have you seen this new Vine? Cameron Dallas is so funny. What is Vine and who is Cameron Dallas? You don't know what Vine is or who Cameron Dallas is? No. Come here, I'll show you what's up. What if others don't know about Vine? Then it's a good thing Kristen and Martine have more to say about Vine. Vine is an app that's associated with Twitter and started in October of 2012. 
Since then, the app has taken the social media world by storm, with millions of vines posted every day. It has made ordinary people like Nash Greer, Cameron Dallas, and Brittany Ferlin into social media stars. Here's Martine with more. Who's your favorite person on Vine? My favorite person would be King Batch. And mine would probably be D Storm. Can you reenact your favorite Vine? Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, kill him. Ooh, kill him. Do it for the Vine. I ain't gonna do it. Do it for the Vine. I ain't gonna do it. Do it for the Vine. Do, do it for the Vine. This is my song, girl. My whole life has changed. Yes, it did. Who's your favorite person on Vine? Nash Greer. Cameron Dallas. Can you backflip? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Ready? No, I can't. <laughs> do it for the vine. I ain't gonna do it. Do, do it for the vine. I ain't gonna do it. Do it for the vine. I ain't gonna do it. You got a bae? Or no? Boy, you trying to date? Or no? There you have it. Looks like Vine does play a big part in our culture. Seniors in ASL. It's time to order your American Sign Language Honor Society honor cords and medals. Cards are $14 and Lauren Clark medals are $16. If you completed two years with honors, you can order the cord. If you completed three years with honors, you can order the medal. Money is due by Friday, March 7th. Go see Ms. Gillespie. Have any other questions? Speech, interp, and debate team for doing so well at this past weekend's district tournament. Three students are now qualified for nationals. Michael Buse and Ben Broderick have qualified for duo interpretation and John William Vanderschans is qualified for extemporaneous speaking. The Centennial Act Act team went to the state champion meet and came back with 35 medals and thousands in scholarship money. Kaylin was named state champion in two events and Max, Megan, Maddie and Eric were named champions in one each. Overall the team was placed third. I can't wait to see the Winter Olympics. Well, you're too late. Well, in case you haven't been able to watch, we thought we'd bring our own Olympic fun to you. Hey guys, Sarah here with Titan TV. The 2014 Sochi Winter Olympics came to a close on February 23rd. In honor of the Olympics, we had our own Olympics at Centennial between students and teachers. Here's a list with more information on what happened during this competition. The competition consists of four challenges, which are basketball, soccer, baseball, and cupcakes. First, they had to shoot an angry bird into a bit then kick a ball around three cones. Afterwards, hit a paper ball with a ruler. And finally, eat an entire cupcake. Now let's see what occurred during the Olympics. Mr. Lyre, are you gonna hit my bird? Nah, I'm not in, I don't have to yeah. touch it. Hey Titans, I'm Mitchell with your sports update. Both boys and girls soccer team lost their respective games last week, but we'll know they'll fight back for the rest of the season. The Titan baseball team struck out against Hebron 6-3. However, Lady Softball did well at their tournament, beating Sulphur Springs 9-6 and tying North Forney 5-5. Titan sports has been plagued by injuries this year. 
We speak to some players and coaches about these obstacles. This has been a year full of ups and downs for Centennial's athletic teams. One of the major issues has been the frequency of sports injuries. Today I'm here to talk with the coaches and players and see how it has affected their team. How did you injure yourself? Uh, I had a stress fracture in my tibia and it broke through and a kid hit me from the back. What are you planning to do to get back in the game? Uh, the doctors gave me a boot, a little shoe on my calf so I can walk on it and like apply pressure little by little. Kareem Aleo fractured his tibia during preseason, sidelining him for the rest of the year. With your starting forward out, how did you and your team adjust to his absence? I think the biggest adjustment we had to make was defensively because what we do defensively, we were playing Kareem in the front of our zone and uh, that was very disruptive and I think with him playing in that position, it allowed us to put a lot more ball pressure, which led to deflection steals. We got a lot of easy baskets that way. When he got injured, we have to we had to shuffle guys around, and uh, I think our defense became a little more passive because of us, um, because of that injury. How did Kareem's injury affect the varsity team throughout the season? Did our season because we had planned on Kareem playing a pretty big role for us. Um, and when we lost him in that role, we had to go back and change what we thought we were going to be capable of doing. Um, whether that made us more successful or less successful, it's hard to tell. I mean, you lose a guy like him, he's such a force on the court, and he can be such a presence offensively and defensively that um, it makes a difference. You have to have guys step up into roles that they might not, not necessarily have been prepared for. Um, but I think that's a good thing for the future. It allows some of our guys to um, play things they might not have been comfortable with, step up into roles and do things that maybe they weren't ready for. Another player who is suffering a major injury is girls varsity soccer player Tristan Hanks. She is currently dealing with a torn ACL. We talked to Coach O'Brien to learn more about this tragic injury. The injury is it's pretty devastating for our defense because she was a vital role but they have been able to pick it up and, and take right over the girls who've stepped in her place. And um, it's mentally hard because this is a second injury for her on the same knee and it's a little more severe. So the girls are very supportive and we've done very well. How did you tear your ACL? <laughs> um, we were playing Wakeland and I was running back with a girl and I don't know if she like, cause I was in shock so I really don't remember. But I don't know if she like hit me or if she tripped me or what, but my knee hyperextended and popped and I started screaming. <laughs> what are you planning to do to get back in the game? Well, I have my surgery on March 14th and then until then I'm doing rehab to get stronger before I have my surgery. Titan Swimming went to state this last weekend. Congratulations to Roberto Roig Perez Wesley McElhaney, Pierce Wilson, and Cullen Nickel for their excellent performances at State. I still want some pie. Allie, it's time to say goodbye. Bye, we're going to get pie. Eat some pie this week, Titans. <laughs>